arrived to Razvadov and right away jumped into 350 euros opener event, bracelet event. 3000 total people or so made day 2 and then day 2 finished 75th which was like a deep run and it was like 100k for first. Yeah, it was fun. After that played a couple other events, 1300 mini main event, couple bullets in that one, didn't cash and didn't make day 2. There was 500 colossus event, also didn't cash, couple bullets in 1k KO side event. So there was a little streak of no caches after the opener. Rosvodov is like very small and uh, played a lot, wasn't outside too long and uh, just wanted to do something outside of poker as well. It was turning into a little bit of a routine. I would go to do some sports in the morning, have breakfast, go to spa and when play poker. I wanted uh, to go to Prague. went back and uh, right now feeling very good and uh, ready to to play the main day two was going pretty good for a couple levels, we reached 300,000 from 148k that I started with. There were a couple hands, one after each other, that got me down to 60,000, which was 15 big blinds at that time. A regular player raised under the gun. Everyone folded it to me in the big blind. I defended 9-5 suited. Flop came 5-4-2, two diamonds, one spade. I led for a quarter of the pot and got raised here. My first instinct was just to fold here, not to get into too many details. I felt that my opponent was pretty strong here. I ended up calling here and fast forward. Turn came 7 of diamonds, check check. And the river was 8 of spades. I decided to turn my hand into a bluff. He tanked, called with set of five. That was the hand that uh, was painful because I didn't listen to my first instinct. It cost me a medium-sized pot. And like four hands uh, or, or three hands later, I get pocket eights, low jack position. I raised to 6,500 Orpen who won 50k high roller a couple days ago and won his first bracelet, I think. Re-raises to 26,000 from the small blind. He covers me and I have 240,000. I call and the flop is A6 deuce rainbow and he bets 15,000 into 259. I decide to call my eights. The turn is four of hearts. He checks. I decided bet quarter of the pot to protect my hand. I bet 22,000. He calls. And the river is queen of diamonds. He checks. I'm pretty sure that uh, after he called the turn, that he has like jacks, queens, kings, or ace x. Decided to bet uh, big, like 110,000 into 135. Thousand targeting jacks kings thought he could fold a sex as well so I bet 110,000 leaving behind 50,000 he fought for 15 seconds or so and called with a7 off so yeah that was messed up hand by me actually if I want to target kings queens jacks or tens I could uh, check back the turn and do that on the river with eights I should check back turn and uh, see what river brings and if I want to turn it into a bluff I can bluff uh, the river but a lot of the times it will be too strong of a hand to turn it into a bluff I think. I just don't need that kind of scenario in, in such an easy tournament.
yeah, messed up this year. And then it was the result of some left frustration from the hand before with 9-5 suited. Just tried to win the pot uh, where I normally wouldn't. I felt like I wanted to scream or hit something. During the break, I felt that this is the moment where either I uh, reset myself and do my best to get back to the tournament, or uh, it ends very fast. I got outside, walked in the fresh air for a while, went into cold shower just to wash off all the bad energy and uh, got back to the table, ready to fight back. That was the crucial point of the day. It was a test of how will I deal with this uh, downswing. It was very important because after that, ended up the day with a decent, decent stack. 170 people left right now. 115 make the money. And tomorrow, it's day three. You get used to the regular playing, especially when you're going deep in the tournament, like day three, day four. It's getting more interesting every hand because people are dropping and you're getting closer to the final table and the trophy eventually. You get some adrenaline because of that as well. And uh, sometimes it's tougher to fall asleep than to play the game itself because when you're playing, time flies and it just disappears, basically. Patience, mental clarity and uh, just staying present in the moment and uh, not get too high or too low on your emotions because there will be swings, you'll have good uh, moments, you'll have not as good. You just need to be ready for everything. If it's day after day after day, I just try to listen to my body and at some point take a day off if, if you're feeling like super tired or like you need to change your surroundings. Just need to listen to yourself and then you'll know what to do. But yeah, of course it happens that, that you get tired at some point, so we are all human in, in the end. If you're not used to playing a tournament like these main events for five, six days in a row, you'll get tired and uh, it's likely that you're gonna do a mistake when the stakes are getting higher and when the tensions are higher. It's very natural, I think, to keep practicing and uh, improve your mental stamina so you would see the reality as it is. Day three started with me having 297,000. It was 36 or 37 blinds, very playable stack. But it started tough, I didn't win a single hand for the first hour. Got down to like 200,000, blinds got up. Yeah, it was tough. But then we were getting closer to the money. I was uh, risking my all stack for the first time, got my 20 blinds in with queens against ace king, fortunately won that one and from then on it was going uh, way better. When the bubble burst I had like 100 blinds, on the bubble we had a very fortunate hand against an Italian, nice guy actually, he was on my right and he got coolered very badly. And uh, I got a double up on the direct bubble with full house against better full house. From then on, everything went very smooth. I had a huge hand with aces, opened from under the gun to 32,000 when the blinds were 8 and 16,000. Small blind called. I had like 90 big blinds. Big blind, the same Italian guy, re-raised to 150,000, big squeeze. 
he had around 900,000. So I decided to flat call and trap my aces and small blind uh, shoved all in for 1.4 million. Big blind reshoved all in as well pretty fast so it was a dream spot with aces I called obviously and the small blind had queens. Big blind had pocket jacks and I won huge pot and had 4.5 million at that time like 6x average and was chip leading the tournament at that point. Later on the day got up to almost 6 million, also lost kings against queens for 3 million more. Can't complain, it was a great day and finished the day with 4.6 million, which was uh, second stack out of 42 people left. After the day felt really satisfied with my performance. I came here with a friend of mine, Algir Das. It's nice to have someone to talk to about some, some hands, some mindset after the day. The process is more, more fun when you are uh, sharing it with, with somebody who is like minded, shares the view on the game and on life. You can learn from each other this way. Even though we want to win against our players, but there is also mutual respect for each other because we are all in this thing together, basically. There is uh, some connection just because of that. Forty-two people left getting closer to the final table. When I would close my eyes, just images of me winning the tournament would come up. Playing in day four is just always fun and uh, exciting. Everything was going smooth. I was growing my stack little by little. A lot of small pots, stealing blinds, not too many risks. People were going out fast and after level and a half or so there were less than 30 people left. When there were 24 left there was a redraw and I arrived to the TV table for the first time. We played uh, for uh, quite a while with each other. There was a very interesting hand against Frenchman. Solid player erases from hijack with king queen off, 2 and 60k, and he has 2.8 million before the hand, over 35 big blinds, and they find pocket button. ends from the button. It's like those are just calling chips. I stack corrected. A call. Big blind regular from Czech Republic also calls. And we go to the flop. Flop comes Jack of Hearts, Nine of Diamonds, Eight of Diamonds. Big blind checks. Story with the two overs, Queen of Diamonds and Nut Gut Shot. Pastore checks and I decide to bet 25%. Big blind folds. Pastore decides to check raise to 510,000. I bet 150k. I call. Vlad wasting little time here. Interesting decision to check raise this combo from Pastore versus the button flat. The turn comes eight of hearts, bringing double flush draw on the board. See if Pastore continues to tell the same story that he was trying to tell on the flop. After thinking for a while, decides to bet 850,000. Uh, a little over 50% of the pot. Biggest pot of the tournament for both these players. I decide to call again. 3.3 million in the middle. I was pretty confident that I have the best hand at this point. 
his sizing I thought that with full houses he would bet smaller usually because he bet more than a third of his stack on the turn so it was a little bit strange I'd say huge river card incoming for both players story with the flop check raise wow king of hearts on the river he quickly checks and looks into me that quick check and stare down felt a lot like he caught a showdown value on the river at this point i'm pretty sure that i'm beat I decided to turn my hand into a bluff and try to fold his king. And he announces all in. Vladiator, you sick pup. Don't like that it's only half pot left on the river, so he has decent odds. This has got to be the play of the tournament right here. But also I like the play because it's pretty tough for me to bluff in this pot. I have to turn something into bluff like jack 10 10 9 if i bet the flop with it or jack 9 suited but it's tough for me to give like a natural bluff maybe like ace 10 of diamonds would be the most realistic hand but i have a lot of value hands like sets full houses with 9 8 suited jack 8 suited pocket 8s 9 8 suited queen 10 suited backdoor flush draw so i have way more value hands than, than bluffs. We just take a moment to appreciate how stoic Vlad has been the entire hand. Okay, check, wait, check. Yeah, it was a tough situation for him on the river, but he fought for a very long time and uh, he does make the call. Take a bow, young man. Take a bow. 6.2 million chip pot. How does that feel, ladies and gentlemen? Biggest call of his career. This hand affected the tournament very big. The swing of winning that hand and losing the hand was huge because if I win, I become chip leader of the table and the whole tournament and if I lose I got down to 45 big blinds and on my left there was the chip leader at the time Sean Deep who had like eight or nine million I liked my play but didn't like 100% how I executed it on the river after the hand felt a bit uh, frustrated the hand was so long that uh, the 45 minute dinner break started, the hand took more than 20 minutes. I got back to my room, took a cold shower to wash frustration and got back to the table fresh, ready to go again. but didn't go too well right after the break. Lost a couple small pots, the stack wasn't growing. It was challenging, but I managed to concentrate, play my game, and I'm happy about that. Pot after pot, people were falling. We reached two tables stage, 16 people were left. I was maneuvering with shorter stack, but I think I did a good job with it. I was happy about my plays and got some free bets through. The king six off hand was very important to maintain my stack, so I could still have some raises and steal the blind. Trying to get the deck to talk. Zedek's just laughing, no response. That's the 350 in hand. He makes the call. 
very big hand was when I got tens in the big blind. Thomas with 3.1, but either way, we're either going to be down to 10 or Kim is going to be left with two bigs. King, King, a one diamond so far, so good for the Lithuanian. Nine on the turn. Can the Lithuanian hold to get back up to 6.4 million and 40 big blinds on the final table bubble? He can. Five of clubs. Tanasauskas holds with the tens and is back up to over six million. And then we reached final nine. We have one table left, that's always exciting. We're gonna play till eight players left for the official final table. Nine-handed play uh, looked like it could go for a while because there were no real short stacks, but uh, it took like three hands, I think. Seven of clubs on the turn is Boatman's WSOP Europe main event final table going to be short-lived. Two outs once for the OG. Needs to find a 10 to stay alive. Wow! 10 of diamonds, corner pocket. Barney Boatman. Old school still got it. Adams looks absolutely gutted. Adams down to three bigs. Adams out of his seat. 13 hours of play today. Jack of Hearts pairs the board on the river and we lose one of the best players in the world. That was it. Was in for the official final table.